Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. I'm just going to go into the word, straight into the word. I could feel the grace. Um, some of you, you want to you wanna hear the word of God today. The grace for his word is available today. Hallelujah. We pray for you. By the power in the Holy Ghost, things will begin to move. In Jesus' name. Yeah, brother, sum brother, laba, laba, da yash. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, zuzu, zuzu, mazama, nama, da, da, yuviya, brother. Oh, rebebe, rebebe, apaya, shande, de, bohos. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Let me move this thing and say we go. We flow from here. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the things I really want to address today, uh, which we, it was going to be a continuation of what we dealt with um, um, yesterday. Hallelujah. Um, it, it, it's something that the Lord has been laying in our heart, and we need to deal with this thing and address these issues. Hallelujah. God, God of grace and God of favor will always arise upon his people in the name of Jesus Christ. Always arise over his people. And I bless God for what he's about to do in this season. Thank you, Father. All right. What were we dealing with yesterday? Um, if you were here with me. Uh, yesterday, we had some times, amen, thank God, for what the Lord began to share with us. And we said that um, there are seven ladders to greatness. Amen. And we begin to deal with, where's my... Um, and uh, so yesterday we were dealing with some issues uh, um, and we, the Lord began emphasizing, you know, to us about obedience, 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 hallelujah, that the more you obey God, the more he lifts you up. And uh, another secret of obedience is that you're not independent, amen? Your proof of obedience is that you rely on God, hallelujah. And so when you rely on God totally for his guidance, for his direction, you will begin to see an impact. Hallelujah. I, I hope you can hear me on Periscope. Those who are listening to me on Periscope, I hope you can hear me. And I hope uh, the, the signal is much more better. So let me know, please, if it's, if it's a blessing to you. Hallelujah. And uh, so we begin to see the, how obedience to parents, obedience, obedience to uh, spiritual authorities, obedience to mentors, obedience to the fathers can be a blessing. Hallelujah. It can be a huge, huge blessing in our life. And uh, <clears throat> number two, we also saw that uh, humility. Amen. We also take you another, it will be, when you add humility, it's a flavor that causes God to exalt you. Amen. It says your pose is what? The, the pride. Amen. But it gives grace to the humble. And so when you are, you walk in that footsteps and you begin to say, Lord, I want to really walk in a place of humility. It gives you the grace to be able to overcome it. Hallelujah. And it also gives you the 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 hatred, amen, towards um, uh, the, the, the spirit of uh, pride. Hallelujah. We also said that the spirit of pride also too has to do with our focus, with self-focus. It's all about me, 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 me. And so when you study the story of Lucifer, he began to evaluate his beauty. He began to evaluate how smart or how wise he was or how revelatory he has acquired and revelation he has acquired so he felt like he could overthrow god or he could be above god and you know it's a wrong place to be whereby you feel like nobody could advise you you feel like if anybody should advise you they need to be a smart smarter than you or to up to your level hallelujah and so you always want to so every time you meet with people you want to check your status you want to check their status to see if they are qualified to even speak to you. It's a spirit of pride that if you're not careful, I mean, hallelujah, it will lead to destruction, destruction, major destruction in our soul. And so this is why we want to be very, very, very careful because what is about to happen in this season is God is looking for those who are meek, uh, meek lowly, amen, hallelujah. It's not easy to be meek. You can't just get there one day because the flesh will let you. The flesh will continue to project the weakness against you. But one greatest result that amounts to all this is prayer. Once you're a man or a woman of prayer and you begin to pray in the spirit, 
he shatters the old flesh, the old, the old man. And then there's an emergence of the Spirit of God that rises within you in the place of prayer. In the heat of prayer, hallelujah, your old man is arrested. And the, the, the real prisoner, which is, the, the, which is the, actually the new man, which is um, the supernatural being, the Holy Spirit, begins to emerge, that inner man, to come forth. The inner man has been buried, really buried like a treasure, chained within the cells and the prison of the flesh. Hallelujah. But in the place of prayer, when you begin to wrestle, this is when, when, the, when the new man comes forth, you will begin to hear clearly. You begin to hear the voice of God, you'll be led by the Spirit of God. And so this is the greatest race for every believer, every Christian. That's why the Bible says that. Hallelujah. Sorry about it. Sorry. <laughs> Amen. Is it better now? Talk to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we see something that is very, very unique. Something that is very, very special. Um, I want us to get yourself ready. One of the things that has affected Christians and believers around the world is hunger. 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 You can be on fire and if the devil try to kill your hunger for the Lord, hunger for his word, appetite for the spirit, he has affected your approach to reaching out to God. Because when, if you, it's, it's only hunger that causes a man to go in a lengthened fast. It's hunger, hunger for his power, hunger for his anointing. We cause you to go into days of fasting, saying agonizing and saying, Lord, do this for me. When a hunger is upon you, amen, it causes you to begin to reach out to the depths of the Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Sundaria Porodosos. Baradish. Hallelujah. By the power in the Holy Ghost. I didn't even see what he wrote in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, let's ask God for more appetite for his presence. More appetite for his glory. More appetite for his anointing. More appetite for fresh fire. That the power of God will be released upon your life. That the grace of God be released upon your life. That whatsoever hidden treasures will be within you will be unlocked by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you come on this line on Periscope, I pray for you that you have an engagement with the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Holy Ghost will engage you. The Holy Spirit will amplify, amplify His the fear of God upon you. That you will hear the fear of God. You will hear the voice of God. And God will begin to drive you to the place of repentance, to the place of second, uh, uh, purity, consecration in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And we also talked about generosity. We also talked about sacrifice. It's like being sacri being a sac having a sacrificial heart, paying your tithes, being a giver, hallelujah to your neighbors, being a giver, finding a child or somebody, sponsoring them to school, paying for their school fees, hallelujah, helping them in one way or the other. You need to extend that love and compassion, hallelujah to the poor, to the poor. When you see a poor a woman with a small child, there should be a compassion that breaks for you, breaks for them, amen. Take them, sponsor them. Hallelujah. Sponsor them for schools. Hallelujah. And you will see the blessings of the living God in a very, very powerful way. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And the next thing I want to deal with, which is a serious, dicey topic. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Uh, I think I spoke to this one. We spoke about this before. Speak evil of no man. Um, I don't know why every time the Lord wants me to go back and share this. Because we live in an age now that there's so much forces going around. So much things being spread around. So much discrediting of men of God. So much discrediting of our leaders and people around. And we, we, when we talk, we don't talk with a reference. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. We don't talk with a reference. So, so there's so many things that are happening in our lives and destiny. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The two. This does two. Hallelujah. And I pray that in the name of Jesus that God's hand will be released upon you. <clears throat> Whatsoever witchcraft that was targeted against you will break. 
Hallelujah. As you hear in the sound of my voice, 2018 is going to be a very serious year. Remember this, your greatest accomplishment will be of to consecrate yourself. Because remember this, the old man and the new man, they are both competing for to have access into your life. They are competing for your soul. And so every time you give your soul, your soul gives a room or a land in your heart. Amen. So the old man, the old man builds, lays a foundation. And if you let him more, he will build a, a, a bungalow. If you let him more, he begins to lay it begins to lay a palace and it begins to go on and on and go on and before you know this mansion and before you know it you won't be able to control yourself because now your old man is out of control and so the quicker the better to demolish it and the longer you wait to demolish it the harder it is to demolish the old man hallelujah that's why paul says i die daily because the greatest if any man is able to fight and to defeat his old man you become a champion in life dying to self and that's what i talk about sacrifice amen hallelujah and so you see that those days when we want to study and to, to for our exams we dip our legs in water so that we can stay awake we drink the strongest coffee just to stay awake hallelujah and you know what it, it worked for some and some others it didn't work but, but talking about sacrifice it needs your dedication for the kingdom of god hallelujah you can sacrifice for people you can sacrifice for your family Hallelujah. But this thing we're dealing with is this speak evil of no man. Uh, speak evil of no man. Hallelujah. It's not everything that we see, we understand, or um, just by speaking shows our shows our attitude of arrogance. I don't know why. And uh, many of us, every time we speak, we don't speak after we've prayed for such individuals. We speak even before we pray. Hallelujah. We speak before we pray. And, and God is watching us. And he doesn't want us to operate in that with that mindset in jesus name hallelujah mm, thank you holy spirit he's a uh, he, god will begin to manifest his presence in a, in a strong and mighty way in our lives from the top of our head to the soles of our feet i speak healing upon that sister right now that sister going through some terrible waste pain spirit of god i pray for healing power that her lower back be healed now as she's hearing the sound of my voice and father you will touch her now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet i rebuke that spinal pain right now in the name of jesus be healed now 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 and that joint problems in your leg that pain in your joints right now you are being healed in the name of jesus christ i curse the afflictions of the devil i break every demonic power over your life right now be healed in the name of jesus christ thank you holy spirit Mozu brande rebe bia para katili bia zele be rebe bia para dish. May I feel your presence now, Holy Spirit of God? We thank you, Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Amen. So when we're talking about about these, is is something that we need to really work out. You know, back in the days, when somebody comes with me with such words, I get so upset about. The negativity of people i don't want to hear it and this is when aggressively i begin to pursue the heart of god those days i will stay days without food until i hear from god you can even put food in front of me and i wouldn't even budge pay attention to it because all i needed was god there was a real hunger that we lack in these days we're praying that god will begin to restore that hunger the hunger that would drive him, that would take a man to drive for 16 hours out of his city, looking for a place to abide in his presence, to hide away from the flesh, hide away from the enemies, to that secret place whereby he can rest in you. Father, give, grant us this access. Grant us this access into your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Oh, sick a brondo ziva de baby a paradis. Zelem rendele brebebias. Let me tell you something. You can't just wake up because sometimes when you wake up, some of you feel a level of oppression. Some of you feel a level of weakness and heaviness. Hallelujah. You want to be very careful in this season. The Lord said to me, He said, Some of you tell my people they need to be very careful how they hug people. There's certain people that are 
they, they, they've refused to even fast or take one day or two days in a week to fast. Let me tell you something. Every day, the devil is investing the flesh in you. Every day, the devil is investing evil, planting evil inside of you. If you don't pray, you will see some things happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I want to tell you something before we go into this scripture. <clears throat> Oh Lord, Hallelujah. You must understand, we believers, when God sends his light upon your life, the devil will look for how to kill that light. The devil will look for every, every way and every moment to extinguish that fire. How does he do it? It brings food sacrifice to idols, either in your dream or in the physical. It begins to introduce all kind of spiritual slumber that causes you to let down your guard. If that doesn't, it also introduces what they call spirit of conflict, conflict in the home, to scatter, to bring, bring, make you to be destabilized and come to the place of offense. And if all these things are beginning to progress in your life. It's evident you need to separate yourself and go to a place of prayer. Every time you begin to get agitated, it means, it means that you're losing the peace of God. Step aside. Call yourself into the secret place. Because the, the more you get into the secret place, the more you're above the enemy. The more you ascend. But the more you stay away from prayer, is the more you descend. You must understand who you are. You must understand there are forces trying to manipulate or influence your life. Never stay one day without praying. If you can't pray and it's so noisy in your house, go into the car. Spend time in the car praying. Calling on the Father in the name of the Father and begin to call on fire. Just if I beg of you for those who are not praying in the Holy Ghost who have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you. It's a beautiful time to begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen, hallelujah. I'm beginning to pray in the Holy Ghost. You can go for hours. That's why sometimes I choose to, to drive instead of flying. But if I fly to an event, especially if I'm speaking, I like to stare at the window so nobody bothers me. And when I stare at the window, I lean my head to the window, I have my bows and earpiece, block everybody, and I go into the realms of God. I mean, man, I love it because I just start speaking in tongues and I'm gone. And usually, the people I stay, the people that are around me, they've all fallen asleep. They're all gone. Amen. At that time, when you're above every wickedness, you know, there's so much wickedness now that is it's unbelievable. Especially in America, everybody's rushing, rushing, rushing. Everybody's becoming more arrogant. Everybody is becoming, I know it all, I know it all. Everybody is becoming like a beast, no more like a baby, no more like a human anymore. They're becoming something else. If you don't take one day of fast to consecrate yourself, if you don't take one day to pull yourself aside, if you don't spend at least one hour to pray before the Lord, your Christian life is in danger real danger you need grace to uphold you you need to dive into the word of god because just by opening his scriptures and reading and letting the word of god enter your eyes god will begin to quicken your molecules you will begin to quicken your body and you begin to receive life on the inside hallelujah somebody say glory so what you are seeing here you look at this look at look at that scripture amen in the book of psalms we are all we are all we all made mistakes hallelujah amen psalm 101 look at psalm 101 i hope the signal is not losing anybody hallelujah glory to god psalm 101 amen <clears throat> mm. Look at what it says in verse 4. It says, well, Psalm 101 verse 4. 
a forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. A forward heart shall depart. God will put away the forward heart. Number, look at the next verse, verse 5. Whosoever privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. The word slander means accusation. You begin to accuse him. You don't know if it is false accusation or if it's true accusation. Whatever form of accusation, whether it's true or right, in the eyes of God, is something you should not do at all. Listen to me. In this earth, is what was going on right now around the world. This is the hardest, hardest price for people to pay now. A lot of people are falling for this trap. And that's why it's very hard for people to live holy. You mean you can slander your president in your house and you think it's not a slander because he's a government official. So when you talk about people that you're close to, then you know that that's slander. No. Whether you talk about the government, you talk about this, the Bible says what? Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Hallelujah. And then when you do that, you will see that the Lord will be victorious over you. You begin to see that the hand of the Lord will come upon you. You see that God will begin to make him an intercessor. You see that God will begin to reveal himself to your life. Hallelujah. So, if we begin to, it says what? Whosoever privileged slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. And him that has a high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer. I said to a lady, Hallelujah. Mm. I said to a lady, I said, ah, you know you're married. And you're going about slandering. You don't even have the fear of God. You're still young. You talk like as if you, you insult adults. I said, you don't have the fear of God. No presence. You're just going about. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And you realize that this mouth will catch, will catch up with you very, very soon. When you talk about men of God, be very careful because they can place a curse on you. God specifically says, touch not my anointed. The ones that I anointed, don't touch them. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. When God begins to speak through his prophets, who are prophets? Prophets are his servants, are his laborers who he has trained. Prophets are the ones who have gone seasons. When do you when we use the word prophets, what does that mean? Because when God says prophets, what, what, what is he trying to emphasize? People think it's just a status. People think it's just a call. Let me explain it to you. When God says prophets, it means that those who answer the word prophets, in one time of their life, they are forsaking their family for the Lord. In one time in their life, they went through extreme rejection to kill their flesh, to hear God's voice. It's not easy to hear God's voice. You go through an extreme denier of the flesh to connect with heaven. You humble yourself in serious fasting to hear from God. When the words of prophets, prophets are known not to enjoy so much pleasure as evangelists, as pastors, as teachers. No. The Bible says that Ezekiel, he wasn't lying down on the right, right bed. When he was asked to sleep, he was asked to sleep on one side. He slept on one side for over a year, on one of his side, of his back. He was also commanded one time to eat dung, dung uh, cow dung, to show the sins of Israel. To assume, the Bible says that John the Baptist, neither did he come eating or drinking. He did not touch food. He was eating locust. When God says, "My prophet," you know one of the things that we prophets, which we, which I've, I've understood, is that. 
every time we pay heavy price of consecration, every time we come to that place whereby it's time to withdraw, God gives us a revelation. We may not have revelation all the time, but only the time that we cut out from everybody and we pull ourselves to God. Now, are you saying that pastors are not prophets? No. What I'm saying is this. Every intercessor that has the ability to approach God and crucify the flesh and silence the outside noise, God regards them as prophet. God sees them as prophet. But when they go back to their own time, if they are used to returning to God and separating themselves to God, God regards them as prophet. Why? Because they become a mouthpiece from God. They hear from God and they declare what God is saying. The prize of a prophet is very difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. I'm not talking about the flamboyant prophets now. Many of the prophets, they hear from God, come down, declare it, and everybody begins to hear the counsel of the Lord. Many prophets continue to pay their price, and that is why they see, you see blessings all over them. But there are some certain prophets that refuse to even come down or mingle with believers. They want to stay up there, like John the Baptist. They want to be stay in a place of solitude. They don't want to identify or connect with anybody. Many times you see people say, I don't want to marry, I just want to be for the ministry and for the Lord. That's because they have a prophetic call. It's only prophets God will say, please come and repent for the whole nation. Stand in the gap. Prophets are usually like, uh, what, what you call it? <laughs> they pay the whole sacrifice. They take the sins of the world and lay it on their back. So if you're a prophet in your family, God will say, okay, come. Come and repent for the sins of the family. So they play a priestly role to prophets. Prophets are the ones that agonize for their own nation. They cry in repentance for their nation. They cry in repentance for their president. They cry in repentance for their sisters, their brothers. That the Lord will come and save the family. And so if you carry that prophetic call, your tears must be a weapon. Must be a weapon. You might not cry in the physical so people can see you. But between you and God, you have this intimate place with God. Hallelujah. I pray for you that you will be a leader in your work with God and not a follower. That you will emerge as a head and not a tail. People will not, you will, people will not be teaching you how to reach God. You will be the one be teaching your family the way of the Lord. The Bible says, by a prophet, a nation is delivered. By a nation, I mean, by a prophet, a nation is delivered. How do how, how will the Lord entrust a whole salvation in the hands of Moses to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Because he was ready to pay the price. Ready to pay the price. That's why they regard them as prophets. Because they are ready to put away the flesh when the Lord says, come up here, come up higher. Some of you have been hearing the nudging ever since. Lord is trying to trigger a hunger inside of you. Pastors, that is why they mingle with the crowd. That is why they're always with the crowd. Hallelujah. That is why when Moses was called into the mountain, you realize that the other priest was on the earth. One of the things you must understand, oh, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God. God is always searching for those who are hungry. He's searching for those who need, who are thirsty for Him. You don't have to be ordained as a prophet from birth. The Bible says Daniel realized that God was looking for somebody. There's always an office and always a seat that God has available for all of us. And if you really want to be lifted by God, receive the seat that God has positioned for you. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you just, when your sister at work or your brother is complaining to you about what they are going through, don't look at them and just say, okay, do this, do this. No. Grab hold of them and say, can I agree with you? Say a word of prayer right there. Right there. 
That is the greatest honor you can sow to your brother in time of trouble. Hallelujah. I beg of you that in this generation, if you're going to lose respect for somebody, lose respect for those who are, who are walking in sin. Lose respect for those who are rebellious. Don't lose respect for preachers who have the answers for your life. Many people are going around now, going all over Facebook. A preacher once who shook the whole of Europe. I don't know whether he's on, he, 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 he drank wine or he's, he, he has been handed over to a reprobate mind. But now he's condemning his own, his, own, his own fathers for where he came from. And everybody are listening. Started this whole message on Titan, confusing the whole body of Christ. And you hear people supporting and liking it. Really? Before him, and the funny thing is that there was a major revival. There's a major revival currently in the country he came from. Mighty revival. And now the and now the devil now is now raising somebody else from that same nation to cancel or to cataract what is going on in that country. Why God is about to advertise the glory as soon as God began to lead evangelists to go to that country, God be, the devil too began to emerge his own psychological, whatever it is, pastor, whatever it is, to also speak against what is going on. I don't believe that that is of God. Amen? I don't believe that that is of God. The devil is a liar. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. Listen to me. You get ready for what God is about to do. He, he will thoroughly purge you. He will thoroughly cleanse you. He will thoroughly sanctify you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to be very careful because the Bible says in the end time, amen, many will have itching ears. Many will be seduced out of the truth. Lord, by the power in the blood, I release the blood over the prayer line. I release the blood over everyone listening to the sound of my voice. Every assignment, plan, plot of the devil, I bind such unclean spirits now. I bind every stranger, every strong man, release over your people. I bind that spirit now. And I command, this, I command by the power of the blood of Jesus that your people be loosed, be loosed right now from the powers of hell. I command every chain, every yoke, every oppression over their lives. Let it break by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I say break by fire in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody say encounters. 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 I count us. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, when you begin to scandalize and you begin to talk about all these things and you begin to talk about the Bible and you begin to break it down in your psychological way, you don't lead people into prayer. Every day you're just talking, 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 talking about this minister. You will have the guts and the boldness to put a minister's video, I mean, who was once powerful, more powerful than you are, you are posting it, you are posting it, showing it to the whole world. I'm like, what is going on? And no day you see him come and say, okay, let's pray. Father, in the name of... No, no day. He's just talking, talking about different people. Very, very wrong. Very wrong. Very wrong. Hallelujah. That's what happened in this country. The spirit of prayer left. You know, you start praying very aggressively. In some churches, even one of these great spiritual fathers or generals in the land, you go to their churches and or to their crusade grounds and you start doing aggressive prayer. Some of them will be looking at you like, like it's offensive. I remember some couple said to me, he said, "Don't, don't, 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 don't wrestle with God. Rest, rest in God, rest in God." I said, "What do you mean by rest in God?" He said, "Just rest in God, rest in God." Rest in God. God has fought with the battle. You don't need to struggle anymore in prayer. I said, really? I said, Jesus prayed and his sweat was like blood. 
He said he was going to die for us, so we don't need to do that again. I said, no, no, no. I said, if everybody pray like the way you want me to pray, we'll all be cold. You need somebody like with Elijah anointed that can pray. Pray like Elijah. The fervent prayer of the righteous. You can you cannot just sit down and kneel down and be praying one simple prayer. You do that when you are really connected with Elohim. But when you are battling with the flesh, you pray, go with aggression. Are you hearing me today? I don't it's very rare now for you to find ministers of this land who can really cast out an homosexual. Because right now the whole land is taken over by wickedness. Who can we trust? Who can we rely? Who is strong enough to really defeat this spirit on this earth? You don't have to be political correct. You don't have to. Just because Joe Austin is preaching and is seeing results in his ministry, don't pattern your ministry after that. I know of a pastor who is so anointed and so on fire. When he begins to speak in tongues, you scratch your head. This man can pray. But since he became a pastor, he's trying to pattern his ministry after Joe Austin. And just because he saw different nationalities, he doesn't want to engage like the way he prays passionately anymore. How is he praying now? Just simple prayer, simple message, so that the rich can come, so that everybody can come. You don't do that. You don't you don't bring down the gospel. I admire his wife. I like to listen to his wife because his wife is still on fire. The wife still gives the hot word, doesn't care. Gives a hot message. Are you hearing me? She fasts all the time. This country needs the fire. Don't compromise. For success and many people are doing this now you want to talk on success on finances you not come down you want to talk so professional and talk you know bring the word into the gospel and act very psychological and professional no leave that alone god said to me say son you don't need flyers to publicize your ministry if you're able to bend your knees in the woods and call upon me The fire I will put inside of you we announce it to the world if you can bend your knees in the hour if you can bend your knees for hours calling upon me once your heavens are open the gospel is open to you I want us to get ourselves ready I want us to get ourselves ready for 2018 for a real, real, real work with God. I make it on my mind that nothing will stop, will, st will, 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 will be on my way. Nothing will hinder me, nothing will delay me. Nothing by any source. Are you hearing me? Ah, me go brand the labels in the Vahanda Labadosh. Somebody say, be a man or a woman of prayer. Hallelujah. He must be a man or a woman of prayer. Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody said that my video is, bu is, is, is buffering too much. Is that true? Is the signal very clear or I don't know. Is it buffering too much? Let me know, please. The signal, is it, is it, is it clear enough? Mm, hallelujah. Let me know. How is the signal? On Periscope. Uh, it's not breaking. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you must understand what I'm saying to you that even this very day, let the power of the Holy Spirit be released over your life. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Let a fresh anointing be released upon you. Are you hearing me? Get to a place. How do you begin to pray? How do you spend? You know that in our daily time, we have two hours and 40. We, I mean, sorry. Um, in our day, we have 24 hours. 
in that 24 hours when we have to offer our tithes to the lord our time is a tithe to him and you have to offer 10 percent to the lord that's two hours 40 minutes in that two hours 40 minutes you, you might seem it so hard no you can accomplish a lot you can spend time giving thanks to god the bible says jesus spoke every time to to, to every time to god we don't know how many hours he spoke but every time it was a major miracle every time he was about to head forth the next day he pulled the way to a mountain and spent time with god what was he saying to god because god was his best friend not man he never really shared personal secrets to peter it was all parables it was all interpretation of the parables but never really spoke how men treated him he never really opened up his secret pains but he did that to the father we must find that secret place in our house where we have an altar built up we must be like abraham whereby we have that place we come away sometimes you don't even need if there's so much noise in your house go to the car go to your car in the garage spend time in there and cry to god pray for your family pray for your children pray for your husband pray for yourself if you've got it so agitated hallelujah thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord oh lord, 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 some of this. hallelujah thank you lord jesus if you have prayed before amen hallelujah and you want some changes in your life what is this thank you lord Amen. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. If for some reason, amen, hallelujah, you've gone through some emotional pain before. You've known that some things are affecting you. You didn't like the way you addressed your husband. You didn't like the way you addressed your wife. You really acted out of character. Or you didn't like the way your children acted. Just pull away immediately. Develop the habit whereby you pull away, you go to your car. Or you go to the restaurant. I say, Lord Jesus, I beg of you, help me. I don't like the way I get angry. I don't like the way I got offended. I don't like this character. I don't like the way this guy is treating me. I don't like the way this woman is treating me. I don't like what they are saying about me. It's very painful. It's very hurtful. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I don't want to walk in a kind of way. I don't want to act out of unforgiveness. I don't want to be unloving. Please convict him. Tell him where he went wrong. Lord, Lord, this is very hurting. Heal my heart. I beg of you, Lord. Make me a better person. And after you do that, you wait for the peace of God to come upon you. And you begin to bless him. The serenity of the Lord will come upon you. God will impart into you greater love. And all of a sudden, when you come out, you feel something better upon you. If you don't do that, let me tell you something. If you don't do that, you will become more critical, more irritated, more irritated, more irritated, more irritated, till a man of God come and lay hands on you. If a man of God doesn't lay hands on you, you will get so irritated. You'll be expecting a miracle for everything to stop. It will stop until you reach out to God. No devil, even pastors I am so irritated because they don't have much time to rest. And so the, the less time you spend resting, the more you get irritated. And you might not even know. One time I was to preach somewhere, I think um, for two days I've not slept. It's not like I can't sleep. If I just lay down on my bed, I'm gone. But that, for those two days, I don't know what happened. My mind was so engaged, doing some things and just, just occupied. And by the time I go for the conference, for day one, I, because I have not slept at all, I began to preach. I thought I was preaching good. And when I finished, I went to the hotel, I was excited. And then I got the message. I was trying to watch the message. And I realized I only spoke for 15 minutes. And I thought I had spoken for 15 minutes. I said, what is this? What is this? I was a little bit embarrassed how the people will see me. But I didn't know 
because I had to rewatch it to know that somehow my mind, because I was so tired, I got cheated that I felt maybe I was spending over two hours. That's what happens when you are tired. You don't even feel the anointing of the Lord in your life. You don't even feel anointed to even pray. Even when you pray, you don't feel the anointing. You don't feel the presence. Because your body has to be rested. You must rest. You must rest. If you don't rest, you will act out of character. You will act so annoyed, so upset. You will act so irritated. You won't be able to control your, 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 your old man. God rested on the seventh day. Hallelujah. What does that mean? It means that though you are a spirit being, even though you might prophesy, even though you might see the light of God, creations might be birth. Even out of that, you begin to see manifestation manifestation of grace birthing through you. But there is a time and there is a moment when God needed rest. And the Bible says, and he rested after he created Eve out of Adam. So it means that even though you might see major breakthroughs, signs, wonders, miracles, ministering around the world, deliverance, healing, creative ability, creative anointing, in the midst of that, you still need to rest. You still need to rest. It baffles me to understand how did God rest? How did he rest? When we begin to, some of you can't even know what to pray. I don't mean the prayer of, I bind you, I die, I bind you, all my enemies die, die. That's not prayer. That's using your authority. When you really want to pray, when you really, really, really want to really pray and really talk to God, there are some things that you do. You position yourself. You take the book of Psalms. And you begin to commune with God. What is prayer? Prayer is the deepest, intimate conversation you have with Jesus. You have with your Savior. Man, I feel the anointing. The moment I say Jesus, whoosh, I feel that presence. Have you ever sat down with him? And interact with Jesus. Have you ever had it? When your last did you have that deepest intimate conversation with your Savior? If you read a scripture like says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. For God so loved the world. Lord, let me partake of your love. Show me your love, Lord. Extend your love to me. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. Oh God, let me experience your son. Jesus, I want to experience your love. You are the fountain of love. You are love. Let the love exist in me. Heal every pain in my heart. This year has been brutal. Show me love. And so you begin to pray from this direction. Simple. Just simple prayer. Not hard. That's what I call prayer. You can sit and just say, Lord, make my hands your healing hands. Whoever I touch, let it be healed. If you're going to struggle with your weakness, say, Lord, I love you so much. 
help me to overcome this weakness. I want to make heaven. I want my children to make heaven. Help me. Help me. I have become disobedient. I have become stubborn. My children have become stubborn. How can I be humble? How can I be meekful? How can I be simple? Teach me. Lead me. Protect me. And so when you're saying these prayers before him, he comes and he embraces you. Sometimes in your dream, he just comes and begins to impart. Jesus, don't forget me. It's just intimate between you and him. Just intimate between you and him. When you, when you begin to acknowledge him, you know what he loves is every time somebody offends you, every time he aggravates you, pull away. Pull away. Jesus, how can I get through this? You mean she said this to me? Lord, this is too hard. Do you know Jesus will look at you and he embraces you with his love? You see, my daughter, it is well. It is well. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said something. Even if God does not hear us, we will not bow to you. By that statement, Jesus said, Wow. You mean they believe me? And they even said, Even if it doesn't manifest. And Jesus says, I will manifest. You mean they're in the fire, they're not complaining. They're holding on to me, my Hebrew, my Hebrew sons. Jesus says, in the midst of the fire, I make sure not one of their hair is lost. You must have confidence in him. Have firm confidence in your God. Let nothing shake you. Because your words of confession will make Jesus proud. Make Jesus proud. Even if Jesus does not manifest, I will not fail him. I will not fail him. Do you know that's the same test that was given to Job? That he may curse God and die. Your confession is needed. Every time humans begin to treat you with persecution, begin to persecute you, begin to abuse you, begin to hurt you, turn your face and begin to pray. I love what Ezekiah did. After a prophet came to prophesy to him, you are about to die. Oh, this guy looks somewhere else. And he began to call upon the Lord. Your life is about to go to a different level. Your life is about to change forever. I prophesy upon you, my sister in Canada. You're coming out of that storm. You're coming out of that storm. I decree in the name of Jesus that the same Lord that quenched the fire before Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the same God that appeared, the same God that provided manna for your people within 24 hours. As you hear the sound of my voice, mercy is being released upon you. God is causing a divine restoration around your life. Weep no more this day. Weep no more this day. Because God is stirring in no hunger, in no fire within your spirit. 
I see God allowing you to go through this season of drought. And God is about to bring multiplication. I see God sending his wind of fire. I see God sending his wind of fire like an intercession. He was even crying for you. You thought you were weeping for the Lord. <laughs> weeping because of the message. Even God himself is weeping for you. I see the Lord Jesus on his knees weeping for you. Our intercessor. You're wondering how will my Christmas be? Your drought is over. I see supply coming forth. I see supply increase is coming forth. It seems that your name was forgotten, but God will cause your name to be remembered again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be well. God will change the tide. It's a fresh anointing that is coming upon you. He's going to brood upon you this day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God for his love and for his presence. I thank God for all those who join in us on Periscope. Thank you, Lord, for those who join in us in the prayer line. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to spend time enjoying you. Spend time with your prayer today. Go to that secret place, either it might be your car, and talk to him. Every pain, every challenge from your flesh thrown at you. God is saying that you have an inner strength. Inner strength. Inner strength to match that. You will never send a temptation higher than yours. Whatever you're going through is because you have that strength. And it's to build you. It's to refine you. Don't be like the Israelites who murmured in their wilderness. Oh, be victorious. Sing the songs of joy instead of murmuring. Sing the songs of celebration. Because I believe and I pray that the doors that is leading you to the past, the doors that accesses your past into the future, the doors of evil or negativity that has been opened this year for your life, I close that door now. I close that evil door of sorrow, the evil door that wiped away your blessings. A man can be a door. An enemy can be a door. A person can be a door. Every evil door that was opened to swallow your prophecy, swallow the good things in your life, to open the days of pain in your life, I close that door now. I close that door now in the name of Jesus. As you hear the sound of my voice, whatsoever has made you weep, we close that door in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Whew, I feel your presence. Ah, oh, man, I feel your presence. Take a minute now. Hallelujah. Let's take a minute and just abide in His presence. The Spirit of God is moving now. Holy Spirit.
some of you don't understand the pain that people go through. You loved a lot, don't worry. Many of his sons go through this pain, but it's to bring them to a better place. God will lift you up this season. He will lift you up. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Lord, I pray for your daughter Pamela and I pray for her sister. Spirit of the living God, I pray you go before her now. Thank you, Father, for doing what you did yesterday. Thank you for all that which you're doing. Let the perfect healing begin in the life of your daughter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. By the power, let the restoration begin. Let her vessel be perfected. Her vessel be perfected. Her blood be perfected. Everything be perfected. The surgery be perfected. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Any quick question, everyone? Hallelujah. Are you blessed? God bless, you. God bless you. Hallelujah. It is, it is well. We thank God for his love and his glory. Thank you for dialing in today. Glory to God. If you, if you don't have my number, my number is 612-701-5983. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. It is well. It is well. God bless you. Amen. Let's share the let's share the grace. What? God bless you. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Bye-bye. God bless you.